Good morning to those in the West Coast, in California, and good evening. Good afternoon to those who are in the East Coast, and good evening to those of you who are in Europe and anywhere else in the world. This is our day three of our Global Self-Awakening Retreat. I'm happy we're all here again and excited for another day of yummy connection and entering into this unified field of oneness. We come here as the lovers of the truth. We are sannyasins, and the sannyasin, as I mentioned before, is a Sanskrit uh, word for the lovers of the truth, the monks on the path, those who gather together in the quest for self-realization and re emergence with the divine God. That is the ultimate goal for the spiritual warrior is to enter into this unified field of love and peace and oneness. So the truth of who we are is the goal, the main part of this retreat. And sometimes we have to discover who we are not. Maybe it's easier than maybe go directly wanting to go and discover who we are. Could be difficult and it may be easier than we discover who we're not. So this is a journey that we're on in this uh, nine days, which actually there's, today's the th third one. So, uh, and we going, my intention is to go through different realms and discover different things. My teaching, as I mentioned yesterday and before, during our academy or other sessions that we have together is not therapy and is not about the realm of thoughts. The teaching is very direct and it's all pointing at silence. And through silence, I discover myself. Through silence, I discover that which is always here, that which is never changes. And through silence, I discovered that there's no birth and there's no death. I am is always I am and is always here. And it's the non-changing, ever-present being, the ultimate awareness. And that is in everybody, every single person and every single thing in the entire universe is made out of I am and I am is always here everywhere but well, we need to recognize this and realize it otherwise it's just words it's meaningless so we went very deep yesterday into abandonment uh, hate, loneliness, we looked at it, why we have this nagging voice and this sense that we're left out and sense that we're not complete and we are looking for something in the utter world to complete us naturally because that is 
our conditioning to look for love and as an object that if we reach it and we get it, then it will complete us. So I'm going to get into that today, but before I get into it, I'd like to finish up um, and wrap up bec yesterday because it's all connected and um, I feel like it's a little bit unfinished. I like to explain a couple more things and gives you an understanding of what happens as we enter into this dimension. Even though it's illusory, and I'm going to get into that, which is it's deeper. Um, we're going to get into this as we go forward, but first we need to clear some uh, essentials and the foundations of our psyche and the way we enter into this world and the, the very first imprints that are being imprinted in our psyche and things that kind of keep us bonded uh, in bondage and we keep struggling about it because simply we don't understand what happened in very early stages of our entrance to to this planet to this dimension so I want to clear that first before we can go to Nirvana so as I mentioned yesterday that upon our entrance to this dimension our parents, our guardians, our um, whomever is taking care of us are not able to hold us uh, next to their heart holding us, hugging us constantly all the time I uh, know that the Balinese women in Bali, Indonesia, um, the first nine months after the baby is born, the mother continuously is holding the baby uh, next to her chest. So their heart's connected. And the mother doesn't put the baby down. So nine months, the first nine months after the baby is born, the baby is constantly being held by the mother. Um, here, when in the modern world, especially Western world, and pretty much right now, a lot of different places in the world, because other countries following the West, because the West is the pioneer, and it's advanced technologically, uh, it's way more advanced from other places, so other countries following the West, even though a lot of the things here are backwards. Uh, but they copy it. But anyway, we're just um, talking, I'm generalizing things, okay? So there are some very interesting things here, some forces, some things that happen that we're kind of ignorant to it and we're not aware of it, of what happens. There's one thing is, yes, you are born and, and you are being handled by nurses or doctors and one interesting thing is that this was a common practice for a long time and I still I don't know if they're still doing it or not because this is not an industry that I'm into or I'm interested in so but to certain points I have an awareness of what is going on and and that is that <laughs> It's a very common thing that when the child is being born, uh, they used to, or they probably do it some other places in the world, is they turn the child ups and down and is holding the child from its foot, from the ankle, and they slap the child on the butt or on its feet. So the child grabs air and it starts breathing. Well, you just 
just imagine for nine months you've been in your mother's womb and you are just there in this position and you're in a warm, comfortable, cozy place developing your consciousness and developing your body. And upon your entrance to the world, which is a tough thing to go through this tube, through the vagina of the mother, and it's really stressful for the mother and the child, upon this entrance from this place that you've been for nine months, which has been very n warm and cozy and comforting, you're entering into the third dimension, you're entering into this world, and the first thing they do is they turn you upside down and they slap you in your butt or on your feet. So this is already being traumatized. It's a major trauma after nine months of being in this warm, cozy, safe place. And upon your entrance, you're being violated in that way. And then after that, okay, they clean you up and uh, they hand you to your mom. Hopefully, if she's conscious. So then you get to, your hearts get to touch each other. And you, so you get this imprint of violence, of being hit, traumatized. Then you get this other imprint of connection with the mommy and it's love. Then, I don't know if right away or later on you get to suck on your mom's tit to get some milk. And also at times you're being left out and put in your, your bed and you experience the sense of being left out and being abandoned. Now if you're a boy, in a week or two weeks after that you get circumcised. So let's look at this. And let's look at the connections of what happens, these early imprints that happen in the child's life and how they relate to each other and how they're forming and how it has formed this dimension that we're living in based on what? It's very interesting when you look at it and you bring your attention to it because you enter into this dimension and you get traumatized. Then you get connected to your mom's heart. So then you experience love. Then you get to breastfeed. Okay, so then you get to be left out, be put somewhere. And you know, in the modern world, if you were born in a hospital, they separate you from the mom. Maybe they, maybe you're born a little bit early or whatever it is, and they take you to the uh, children hospital or section that you need to be taken care of or whatever is the story. So you're already separated from your mom. You've been with her for, for nine months. So you're born, you get traumatized, you get separated from her, you're being put somewhere with a bunch of other kids. So you already experience abandonment as an imprint on your psyche. Then you get mutilated. So now they're going to cut your penis and uh, you get circumcised. And then you're being returned to your mom and you get to suck on her tits. Do you see this connection? And then what happens as you are growing up, you're associating violence, being violated, to your, what? With love, with comfort, with sexuality, and being violated. These are all imprints. Imagine that you're you are born, you get slapped in your butt, so you breed. 
and then they they may put you with your mom and you're sucking on her tit so what kind of imprint is that and look at your relationships when you're living with your partner and look at it across the world that couples get in a fight argument or maybe they hit each other and what did they do most of the time after they beat each other or they hit each other or they argue they make up by making love going to bed and touching each other and making love what most men do what's their major attraction to tits why is tits is such a big thing for them and it's comforting it's when you look at these things you can connect the dots with each other that how much violence is connected to love in our psyche and to sexuality the stuff we learned in the first few weeks that we entered into this world how they're connected to each other look at their connection and the confusion that happens in the psyche of a child of being violated and then being connected to her mom then being taken over then being brought back now she can be breastfed then being taken away so these are all imprints that are taking place in the psyche of a newborn into this dimension then you may wonder why is the world fucked up why people or leaders or whatever people who come to power why they're so crooked why they're so screwed up why they do for the things they do is this making sense I'm hoping I'm putting some light on this darkness or this shadow this thing that is kind of like wondering why upon the entrance we're already screwed up as if you just absolutely have no chance to win and it's pretty amazing that somehow through what goes on upon the entrance in the first few weeks or first few months of your life it's amazing how still some people come out right and they're not totally damaged so this transaction is happening and on top of this transaction to top it off you know what else happens you get vaccinated this child that came to the world and it's only a few months old and it's developing its immune system gets vaccinated poof oh my god it's another major shock no wonder that the number of autistic children is increasing and if you do some kind of investigation the autism started right after they got vaccinated so that's another shock that is being given to the kids on top of all these other shocks so we enter into this sleepy planet we enter into this unconscious dimension totally unaware of its own behaviors and then you have to weigh your way back home so upon your arrival into this dimension you already impacted by these 
very powerful imprints, which is very confusing. So I have to say congratulations for making it to this point. Congratulations that you're not a mass murderer or mass rapist or you are still straight and you're dedicated to your path because all the odds were against you from right in the beginning from your time that you entered into this dimension most of the information that was given to you was to confuse you and to screw you up. Now, forget, we haven't even talked about that nine months that couples, you can see it, look around you in the world. The couples, they've been fighting with each other. Somehow the girl got pregnant uh, it was too early, too fast. They've been seeing each other for three weeks or a month or six months or a year. And she gets pregnant and they think maybe if they have the child together, they're, if things are going to work out. Or nowadays women do want to have their own children and they want to be a single mother. And uh, they have a deep desire, which it's their right to have. It's their nature to have. They want to have a child, but, but the awareness is not of the implications and the damages that we're inflicting upon our newborn children and the generation that we are going to need to survive. And we have no idea what we're doing to them. Zero. Just we're completely asleep, totally asleep. Of what's going on. That's why I mentioned, by the way, I need to credit this quote to Robert Anton Wilson from a book called Prometheus Rising. That Robert Anton Wilson says, how do you expect fairness and decency on a planet of sleepy people? So, what about the couples who've been fighting and arguing with each other, or they hate each other, or they're angry at each other, whether it's the first child or second child or whatever, and the marriage or the union is going sour, or the mom has been threatened, something's been happening, she's going through a lot of insecurities because she, she's a single mom, she doesn't have an income. Everything that is happening to her and the baby's there and the baby's aware of it. We're con completely ignorant to that, that this is a living entity, totally aware of what's going on. And is aware of the arguments of the anger, of the fear, of the threat, of the insecurity, of all the stories happening between the two couple and is going to come into this world. So, the reason I'm bringing this up is I want us to understand where I mentioned this is about the truth of who we are. And the truth is not always pretty. And the truth is not always something we want to hear and to look at. It could be very disturbing because we have to look into the light. And the light could be very disturbing when we're used to the darkness for a long time. It's not comforted, comforting. But I rather to be awake and 
come and look into my own darkness than stay asleep for thousands of years even though it may be painful but I want to look into it so look at this connection look at this connection of the entrance into this dimension of violence love tits penis abandonment look at the connection they're all connected to each other and look at the world you're in right now go on Instagram go on social media and see what happens see what you find look at it take your time and take a look and browse through and see what has become of the new generation so I haven't even entered into the realm of sexuality I haven't explained that part to you yet of how it's connected to shame and guilt and the implications that has manifested in this dimension that I will get into as well maybe not today but I'm gonna get into that so I'm gonna go through everything section by section and dissecting everything but from looking at the first part that I explained to you you can connect that how we're associating violence and getting mutilated or doing that to other people how it's being associated with love how violence or betrayal or being abandoned is associated with mommy's tits or tits in general how it's being associated with penis these are all imprints that happen in very early entrance into this world so then there is this confusion that it connects things to each other there is this confusion for a young girl that if if the boy is a bad boy and he's leaving her and is not giving her attention is actually in her psyche that's the guy that's the one she wants and that's the one she loves because her psyche in very early imprint is connected to her with her dad the part that she adores and loves and worship and the dad so she feels this love with her dad in early stages of her life and the dad leaves so any man that comes into the picture who is not available and is about to leave is what she's unconsciously associating it to love so she loves she wants bad boys men who are not available men who are abusive and this cycle keeps going around and around and then we want to do therapy to fix it but we don't know where it came from well you can't fix something if you don't know the root cause of it because you keep going fixing things but you don't know what's where it's really coming from it's like our modern medicine when you have thyroid issue and you go to the modern Western medicine they give you medication for your thyroid to cover the symptom but they're not looking for the root of it why is the body malfunctioning what caused the body to malfunction so the thyroid is not producing the proper 
hormones or secretes correctly? What's the, why, why is it malfunctioning? Is it food related? Is it gut related? Where, where is it, what's, what is it related to? So now you're going to be hooked on thyroid medication for the rest of your life to keep it balanced. And the same thing here. We go to do therapy because of our sense of abandonment, but we don't know what caused it. So we're trying to fix that, but you can never fix it. Or we're going to change the next to the next partner, the next man, the next woman. But they can't fix it until you go to the roots. So, I hope this is making sense so far, and you're getting an idea, you're getting a picture. I want you to take your time later on and just to kind of contemplate that It will give you an, a better idea why men behave the way they behave or why women behave the way they behave. Where, where is this coming from? So now we go to this other part. I'm four years old, five years old, six years old, whatever, and this is another um, association imprints that upon entrance into this world in the realm of love, partnership, self-love, that we have this misconception and we're not aware of it, completely unaware of what is going on. And we run around around the world in our life, spending our entire life trying to find a partner, trying to find love, trying to be accepted, and completely not being aware of what has happened, completely unaware of it and keep going through all these different things, books about relationships, of how to have a healthy relationship, how to find your, your man, your woman, how to find love, how to stay, have a healthy relationship in your marriage or your partnership, yet again you don't know where the root cause, where the damage is coming, where, where it was done, what's the problem, where is the problem? Now I'm going to explain this. I'm going to get into this. When you're very little, what happens is that, for example, uh, I'll use myself. Um, I had nannies, I had my aunt, my mom, I had a lot of people around me when I was growing up. And I remember, for example, when I... It, uh, my nanny or my, my mom would tell my daddy, oh, look at Zarathustra, he's been a very good boy. Zarathustra, he, he ate his, his uh, vitamins, he ate his spaghetti, and uh, he, he's been a very good boy. Yeah? Don't, don't parents talk about a child in front of the child to each other like that? Like they're encouraging the child that he or she's been good and uh, accomplish things. 
Now daddy says, oh my, well, what a good boy, come over here, put, sit on my lap, I love you. Uh, mommy says, yeah, he's been, Johnny's been very good, and he did all of his homework. So now dad is just, you know, rubbing your cheek or kissing you or hugging you. This is starting from the very beginning, okay? From the time you start to have some kind of uh, understanding or dialogue with your parents. And so pay attention to this part. This is really important, okay? This is how things start to happen, and it's got a domino effect. So what happens is that you start to learn that if you do something that your parents approve of, then you're going to get their affection and their love. So you go to school and you get a good grade. You've been getting good grades. So you're doing positive. And then your teachers are praising you and they're putting you up. You're being a good athlete and you know you throw the last touchdown or you shoot the last goal and you win and the school puts you up and you become a hero if you're a hero then you get the trophy what do you get you get the trophy girl you're a guy what about these movies all these movies that the guy he makes the last score or he threw, throws the last basket and and the school wins, and what does he get? He gets the trophy girl. So for accomplishing something right that society approves of, then you're going to get rewarded. So let's rewind the tape. Let's go back to the kids. So pay attention. How do you dialogue with your kids? How do you deal with them? When, are you, when you were a kid, so you constantly want to do something right so dad loves you mom loves you they approve you they accept you and so what about when you do something wrong so let's say you're six seven years old and your brother is nine years old ten years old whatever your parents going to go out to dinner, you know, they leave you together at home. Maybe one is nine, the other one is 13, whatever is the story. And there's no babysitter. They leave you at home. They go eat something, they're going to come back quickly. And you have spaghetti and you throw spaghetti all over. You got white couches, white uh, carpet, and, and you put tomato sauce all over and ketchup all over the place and your parents come back home, what do you think is going to happen for this behavior? Do you think they're going to hug you and love you and kiss you and buy you a toy or are you going to get slapped on your hand? Which one do you think is going to happen? You're going to get punished for your behavior and you get grounded because you've been bad. So how does this develop is that you start to be trained from very early ages that if you do something that parents approve and accept, then you receive love and affection. If you do something negative that they don't accept and approve, then you get punished. Is it making sense? You're with me? Yeah. Then same thing in school. If you get good grades, you, you are accepted, you're acknowledged or loved. And if you don't do well and you're a bad, bad student and you're running out in, on the breaks and you go behind the school and you're smoking a cigarette or or you're fooling around and doing something like that and then you come back and they catch you, you get punished for your behavior. Same thing in the society. When you enter into the army, if you obey and you do everything that your superiors asking you, 
then you're being accepted and you're being they congratulate you and they send you to war and if you kill a lot of the enemy soldiers you come back home and you're a hero and you get a medal and you know they they send you to you know like these soldiers in Vietnam when they came back or they were from Vietnam they would get go to to Thailand then it was okay they could go to um, brothels or whatever and have prostitutes and do whatever they wanted to do they earned it it was okay no problem or if you're in a war and you killed a lot of people and you come back home we're going to praise you you're a hero for killing a lot of enemy soldiers so you're accepted you're loved you're you're, you're in but if you do the opposite then you're a traitor, you refuse to, to fight, and, or you didn't accomplish anything, you're, you're just pushed away. So we get, this is another imprint, we get brainwashed from entrance into this world that upon our positive acts, positive deeds, we get love and acceptance from mommy and daddy, our school, our society, army, the government. So what do you learn in this transaction from early age? What does this mean? You learn a form of prostitution. You train to prostitute yourself. You learn to manipulate by doing good and the right things that your parents want you to do, you're getting to the rewards. If you sell, you're selling yourself. So you're playing the game. You get to learn to play the game according to their wishes, and then they're going to give you things. They're going to buy you a toy. They're going to buy you a bicycle. If you're a good boy, if you're a good girl and you get great all straight A's this year in school, I'm going to buy you a bicycle. Now you're going to sell yourself and do all these things. You're learning unconsciously that if you play this game, then you're going to get acceptance and love. Do you get it? Is it making any sense? Can you see it now? Does it give you a, a little idea of how your, your psyche, you're getting this imprint already from the very beginning that you entered? Yeah, the first six months, one year, you can't talk, you can't relate. But they're, you know, oh, good boy, oh, he's so cute. You know, he's two years old. He listens to his mommy. He's such a good boy. He's quiet. Da, 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 da. And they keep, you know, mom and aunt talking to each other. You're there and you're hearing these things. So you're learning to play the game. So what happens? What's the danger in this? What's the implication of this kind of conditioning? that in your psyche you begin to believe and you have absolutely no reason not to, to think this way because everybody else around you is doing the same thing. Everyone, everywhere, the media, the radio, internet, TV, everywhere, the movies, everything is supporting this. So you think this is how it is, but it's absolutely a lie, 100% a lie. And what is this lie? That you believe to think that love, acceptance is coming from the outside world. 
it's an object. You have to do something positive and right in order to get your parents' love and affection and acceptance. So love becomes an object. That's why you go through your life and you never find it because you're trying to find it outside of yourself. This is how your program is. You find love outside by acquiring things. So then what happens? They used to tell me, I remember my nanny was telling me, oh, Zarathustra, or my aunt or whatever, go to go be a good boy, do your homeworks, finish your school, and be a good athlete and take care of yourself. And then you go to college and you get a good degree and then you get a very good job and you're making a lot of money and then you're going to find the girl of your dreams and she's going to marry you and you'll be happy thereafter. Happy thereafter. <laughs> Did anybody find that? <laughs> Happy thereafter? <laughs> you're going to find her and you're going to marry her. You know, so you have to do all these accomplishments. Be a good boy. Go to school. Get good grades. Go to college. Get a good degree. Get a good job. These are all objects. You have to accomplish these. Get these objects in order to find the girl to be happy. So you're already also getting brainwashed to defer your happiness into future because you're not happy the way you are and you're not complete the way you are and you're not good enough the way you are. So you have to get good grades and you got to get a degree and you have to make money and then you get the girl and then you're happy. So I have to keep getting these objects in order to be happy because I'm not happy, I'm not good enough, I'm not complete as I am. I have to make money, I have to be successful to be happy. So A, I'm deferring my happiness into an object and I'm deferring it to future. But nobody ever told me that Zarathustra, whether you go to school or not, whether you're a good boy or not, whether you eat your vitamins or not, whether you do what your mommy tells you or not, you are complete, you are love, you are whole. Because it doesn't matter what I do. Of course, years and years after, through intense search and a lot of suffering, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of heartbreaks, it made me realize that I was always complete and I'm always complete and love doesn't come from the outside, especially not the woman. I am the one who generates it. It's because it's my natural birthmark. I was born birthright. It's my natural birthright. I was born with it. It's my very true nature and yours. Love is here. Not dad or mom gives it to you. It's not an object that someone can give it to you. You are love, but you're brainwashed in this, on this imprint that it comes from the outside. Acceptance, self-acceptance. How many of you, how many people I've met, myself included, okay, 
in my life and in my spiritual career that have come to me and they tell me they have serious issues of loving themselves and accepting yourselves. And what do they do? They do therapy for it. But it won't work. Because A, you don't know the root cause of it. B, you're trying to fix something in your psyche. In the realm of thoughts and emotions. Instead of the recognition of the truth of who you are. And realizing the illusion. You remember I said, maybe you can find out who you are, but you can find out who you're not. Maybe I can't find the truth of who I am, but I can at least figure out what is it I'm not. So, I'm deeply conditioned brainwashed to believe that love is an object and all these movies and these songs all millions of movies have made how many movies you you've watched that the boy and the girl they're deeply in love with each other but they can't be together because they're from different classes or uh, of society or or one is super rich the other one is poor and and they finally, at the end, they don't get to each other. And the girl or the guy goes and commits suicide because he didn't get to his love or she didn't get to his love or whatever. And Or you have to have your man or woman in order to be happy and to be complete. So no wonder we got this deep yearning of constantly looking and constantly feeling incomplete and inadequate because I haven't found my love in this life. Because I'm constantly projecting it that it's something outside of myself. It's out there. And I need to find her. And sometimes I do. I have found her. The only thing, it doesn't last very long. In my case, it's been that way. Some people, I know some of you, you've been with your partner all of your life. And good for you. I mean, great. I'm really happy for you. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart. But that's never been my case. I had glimpses of it. And it showed up, and it was incredible, but it always disappears. Until I realized through pain and suffering, I realized that it's here. It's not out there. No woman on this planet can make me complete. No man on this planet can make you complete. Because you are complete. You just don't know it. Now, let me explain one other thing. Because this is a juicy conversation. This is a great topic and it's deep and it's vast. And there's a lot of different areas of it that needs to be covered. And I may miss some of it. Later on, I... I'm going to sit down and watch the tape and take some notes and see if I missed out because this is a huge topic. This is the very foundation. What we're talking about today, it's very, very important. It's very deep. This is something the humanity is struggling with and suffering from it. We all, at one point or another, deal with it. And we need to understand this. Because this understanding of this is a revolution. If we understand this, we, have, we are able to take a major leap, a quantum leap, 
to a higher consciousness because this is holding us back. This is our major hang up. Major. And we've been into this go round and round and round and round and round. Thousands of books are written about finding love, thousands of workshops. So many different people are lecturing about it. But we have to get to the roots, the root of it, in order to be able to transform something, you have to go to the root of it. And you can't unless you question it. You're questioning things. And you're willing to look because sometimes it may scare you what you discover. But, it, but trust me, it's worth it. It's worth it to go deep inside and discover the truth of who you are. Because it's everything. It transforms everything. Your life will change completely, utterly, for better. And then you have an impact on your, surround, in, on your environment. But this is important. Nobody can give you love because you are the source of love yourself. I'm not saying that you come across people you love and they love you and that's fake and it's phony. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm going to get into that too and I explain that to you. But you are the very source of love yourself. The only, the reason you're not experiencing it all the time is because you're not looking inside yourself. You're looking outside and you've been trained to do that from very, very childhood. And it's not even your fault, you know. I don't want to sound like there's, it's your fault or my fault or your parents' fault. No. This is how it's designed to be the whole thing. But now we are on a verge of awakening. We're waking up. The sleepy parts of us is waking up. It's coming out of this coma. Oh, I'm looking for love. I'm looking for my to stuff for my partner because I feel lonely and uh, it just keeps going round and round and round. What happens when you meet somebody and the spark is there and you just, your heart opens up and you feel like you're in love, you found you found the one. What happens in that transaction, in that moment? What happens is the person that you met and you feel this strong love and attraction to is simply mirroring you. It's a mirror. It's mirroring you back the love that you have within yourself, the true love that you are, they're mirroring it back to you. You meet this person, you're a boy, you're a girl, you meet this person and there's an explosion inside you and there's this attraction which is a very natural, there's nothing wrong with that. That's a part of our design. We're packed animals. And we need contact and other human beings 
to be healthy. We're not supposed to be separated from each other. Even though we're on this path of being alone by ourselves to go all the way to the end, but we're packed animals. So that's very natural to see and be attracted to others. But what they do is the other person is triggers this, this love. It just press the button of the love that is within yourself. But since you are deeply brainwashed and programmed to project it on that person, so you're naturally thinking you fall in love with him or her. But you're not falling in love with him or her. He or she is being a mirror, is mirroring back. So that love that you're feeling for him is really the love that is inside yourself. That beauty, that amazing feeling that you're discovering is really what's inside yourself, is waiting to be discovered. It's been waiting for you to be discovered all of your life. And now you meet this person and this explosion takes place and you think you're in love with them. So it's the object. Now you want the object, you want the person because you believe that it's this person that makes you this, have these feelings. So let's say the person agrees and you merge in together and now you're together. But since you're in a dimension that nothing is real, in the, in the objects, as far as the object goes, it can't be together all the time forever. So at one point you get separated. And let's say that you fall in love, you know, I fall in love with this woman and I think this is the woman of my life, this is the one I've been waiting for all my life. You know, a year, two years, three years go by and then at one point she's not interested in me anymore and she wants to walk away she found the younger guy she found a better model she's bored with me whatever is the story and she goes away now what happens when you love the person you're very invested and in, you're in love with and they leave you we say i'm heartbroken i'm devastated i have been there that i thought of killing myself because of the pain, I thought I can't live anymore without her. I couldn't imagine continuing life anymore without her. And you crash. And you go into the dark valleys of yourself. And it's a very painful experience. It's extremely painful. Anyone who's been heartbroken knows how painful it is. But you never were in love with her. It was your own self that you fell in love with. She didn't give you that love. She was only the mirror for you. As you wake up to self-realization, you begin to recognize this love is inside yourself and you start because your attention is turning inwards. This work that I'm doing is to turn your attention inwards, start to look inside. And as you start to look inside, you remember what I said many times, as your mind becomes quiet, you start to feel the bliss. You start to feel the love. That's the divine love inside yourself that when you fell in love with someone, he, she only mirrored the divine love that exists within yourself. And that's true love. So your attention is being turned inwards towards yourself. And what happens is what happened to me. I discovered my soulmate. 
my twin flame, the one that never leaves me, the one who is always here. That's the only woman in my life because she's the one that never leaves me, is always with me. And then when you discover that within yourself, then you become, begin to become whole. Because A, that sense of loneliness, that you're not wanted or not accepted, starts to disappear because you're drinking from your own juice. The fountain of love you started to discover it within yourself. So you're, you are showered in this love of the divine self, which is generated from your own self, because this is where God lives, inside you, surrounding you. And slowly, slowly, it takes a little bit of time. It's not like sometimes, sometimes it could be immediate, sometimes it takes time. But for the, to unclutch from this ancient conditioning, from these thousand years old conditioning, to disconnect from that, it takes time. It's not sometimes immediate. So you begin to recognize this inside yourself, within yourself, around yourself. And so what happens is that the neediness, that sense of your needy starts to disappear because you're discovering it inside yourself. And as you're discovering this light, this love inside yourself, it starts to change your aura. And you're becoming more attractive. Now people are getting attracted to you because you're not projecting it on them. You're founded inside yourself. And any man, any woman in this life discovered the love, the Christ love within themselves, the Krishna love within themselves becomes very attractive. People want you. They want to be with you. They're attracted to you because you've discovered the love. Now you get more attractive, regardless of your physical looks. You may not physically be attractive. You may not be fashionable or whatever, or cool or whatever is your story. Mother Teresa was not attractive looking or sexy or anything. But thousands of people were attracted to her. They loved her because she was emanating love. She knew who she was. So this thing about man and woman or man and man or woman and woman, whatever is your sexual preference, which doesn't matter, is this whole thing, this imprint, this brainwashing, all these movies you're watching that the boy finally finds the girl. And as a result of finding the girl, they're going to be happy. Is simply an illusion. It never existed. It will never exist because that's not the truth. You can find your partner in this life. But if you have discovered that within yourself and she or he has discovered the same thing, then it's going to be a healthy and whole relationship for as long as it lasts. This doesn't guarantee it's going to be forever because nothing is forever in the third dimension. Everything is temporarily. Except I am. Except love. Except that which doesn't change. The presence. 
any other object has a duration. So view that when you're attracted and you love, you feel love with somebody, just know that they are mirroring back the immense love that is in your own heart. And it's being waiting for you to be discovered. So now, all these suicides, all these people who killed themselves because they were heartbroken, because their love left them, was because they're projecting this immense love that they're experiencing on an object. I'm projecting it on a woman. I'm projecting this love on her. So when she leaves me, I am destroyed. So this is the wrong training. We were not trained correctly. We were not taught. We were not educated. We don't have the right education. We have been taught wrong. And just because millions and millions of people are doing it, it doesn't mean anything to me. I don't give a shit that five billion people are doing blah, blah, blah. I don't care. I go my own way. I do my own thing. I don't care five billion people are doing it. Everyone's doing it. So what? I'm not everyone. I'm myself. I choose for myself. My realization is my own self. I don't care what everyone's doing. Well, everybody is doing it. So what? Good for them. I'm not. I'm walking my own path. Where the lion goes, he cuts his own path. Lion doesn't follow anyone's path. It doesn't walk on anyone's trail. Lion goes wherever he goes, he creates a new path and be a lion, be a lioness. Walk your own truth, regardless of what everyone else is doing or thinking. Who gives a shit? This is the truth. The soulmate you're looking for, the partner you're looking for, the love you're looking for has always been within yourself. You're the generator of it because God lives in you. You are God. The divine presence is here. Do you see what's happening? Do you see how we're being conditioned, brainwashed? Thousands of years. I'm not talking about lately. Years and years and years of looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love in all the wrong places. What is that song? Anyone can sing it? And I was there. I am included. I'm not an exception of that. Projecting it on someone else. Projecting it on somewhere else. Projecting it on the future. Oh yeah, if I lose some weight, then I'm ready. If I get my degree in law, then I'm ready. When I make more money, then I'm ready. It's not any other time and it's not any other place. It's here and it's now and it's inside yourself. So look inside, look within, and you will find your soulmate. You will find love because you are the source of it. It's coming from you. Anybody else is going to mirror it back to you. Now, 
can we be attracted to other people and and love them and wanting to be with them of course of course you can of course the human touch is important of course the sharing the love you can be loved by other people of course you can share that Can I be with one partner? Yes, you can. Can I love my partner? Yes, you can. Can I be loved with my partner? Yes, you can. But first, discover it inside yourself. Turn your attention inwards the more your mind is quiet, the more you feel the love which is here. It's immersed love. It's tremendous. It's beyond the romantic love. Romantic love is beautiful, it's amazing, but it's conditional. It's not unconditional. It's conditional. It's what do you do for me and what do I do for you? So you're in with your partner, you're totally in love with them, and then another person shows up, they're attractive, and you start flirting with them, the energy shifts, and you're attracted to them, and you want to feel them and check them out or whatever, and then your partner is going to be very angry and very upset. And if you go and bed this person and sleep with them, then your partner hates you. The romantic love, there's a thin line, like a hairline, in between love and hate. It can flip from love to hate in a moment, or from hate to love, because it's conditional. The only love in this planet, in the third dimension, which is real, and it is unconditional, is the love of the Guru, the love of the Yani. If you come across the Yani and the Master and you're surrendered, that love is unconditional between you and a true awakened Master. That love affair is absolutely unconditional because the awakened Master doesn't care. It's his hair love for you is unconditional. Any other love is conditional. Your mother, the mother and child love is very close to the guru and the disciple love, but it's still conditional. It's still the love of mom with the child has conditions in it. It's not 100% unconditional. Maybe in a few, few first years that the child is helpless and completely dependent it's unconditional, but it shifts. As the child starts to form its own personality and becomes its own person, then that love changes and becomes conditional. Because it's still, if they misbehave and they don't do what you want them to do, then you can abandon them. But the true love in human, in this dimension, the only one which is absolutely unconditional is the love of the Guru. The love affair between the Guru and the disciple. From the Guru to the disciple. That's an unconditional love. Or you find it inside yourself and you recognize that you're the source of it. So as you become aware, I want you to just take your time after today,
take the time, think about it, sit with this. Don't process, process it, let it get processed and just kind of sit with it and see what is Zarathustra talking about. Does it make sense or not? Find it for yourself. And don't just follow what I say blindly and just replace one idea with another idea. So it's a very good concept. What you're saying is great and I'm going to replace it with what I learned from my other teacher. No, don't do that, please. Don't replace this with something else. Dive into it. Find it for yourself. I'm giving the clue and I'm showing you the direction. But walk that path. Then it's of value because you need to find this out on your own. If you don't find it out on your own, it has no value. Look at how we are conditioned to project our love and acceptance on the utter world, on the objects. And look how the media, television, movie industry is all based on supporting this illusion. It is an illusion, it's not real. And just because 7 billion people follow it, it's still not real. The truth is the truth. It shines on its own light. It doesn't matter how many people follow it or not. That doesn't make it real. This is real. And then, let's go a little bit deeper into this. Projecting your happiness on other people. How many people do you know or how many times you have been with someone and you're trying to change them? Oh, he's a really nice man, but he drinks a little bit too much. Or he's a really nice man, but he's not very caring. He's a little nice man, but he's a little bit violent. He's got a sharp tongue. And I'm hoping... I know if I get married to him, that will change. Or he's a really nice man, but he's a cigarette smoker. And I'm hoping it will change. So now you're trying to change someone to fit your image. Or maybe if we have a baby together, things change. And we'll be happy. So now you're projecting your happiness based on someone changing. If they change, you will be happy. That's another thing. Now this one. Check this one out. Of us projecting into the future that when I find my way, when I find my man, when I make enough money, when I get my degree, when I buy my house, when I move to Hawaii, I'll be happy. Projecting your happiness into the future, projecting it on an object, another time. These are all parts of, major parts of our conditioning. You're wondering why you're not happy as you are right now is, you know, because you're doomed. You're doomed to project it on another time, on another person, on an object. Because that's what you've been taught from childhood. This is what you've been shown from childhood. Now, another part. You ready for more or it was too much? Can you handle a little bit more? Okay. So why is it that you meet someone and you feel this incredible connection and you don't feel it for everybody? 
Why is it that one person pulls this trigger inside you that love explodes? That is the presence that appears in between the two people. The presence appears. And when the presence appears between the two meet, me and you, two meet, one body and another body, and the presence appears between the two, and the presence, the power of the presence, the power of God, the presence of the Spirit, it triggers the love that is inside you and you begin to feel the way you feel. That, that presence is responsible for triggering you. And when that presence is not there, there's only two pieces of meat looking at each other. You may say, okay, we're not connected anymore, or the, the magic is gone. The presence only appeared there for one simple reason. And the reason was that you get triggered and you discover the love within yourself. And you discover that you are the one you're looking for. But you're projecting it on the meat. You're projecting it on another person. And then when the presence disappears, then you have no attraction to the other person. Because it was never the other person to begin with. It's your own self. And the other person simply is a reflection of that. You're always looking at yourself. You're always dealing with yourself. Because there is only one here. That appears as many. Okay, maybe tomorrow I talk about acceptance, self-acceptance. It's 11.35. I want to give a little bit of time for questions and answers. Uh, anybody has any question? You want to raise your hand. And some of you, I don't see you, so you're welcome to write on the chat box, and then I, I will talk to you. Okay, Margie, hi. Can Hi. You hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Good. Thank you very much for the lesson. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, I want to go back on the earlier part. Okay. This day, uh, when you uh, explained the upbringing of the child, I totally understand it. Um, um, do you think? Um, it's uh, possible to bring up a child not with all the, the punishment and uh, rewarding and um, um, what was my second question um, and um, or do you think um, is it uh, a part of the path we the, the search we have yeah, it's uh, answering, let me answer the second question and then I go to the first question. The second question, it is obviously if it happened the way it happened, it was exactly the way it was meant to be. It is a sleepy dimension planet and it's waking up to itself and it's recognizing it's sleepy patterns. It's going slow, but it's going. So the second part, yes, it is possible to, to do that. But the old model has to be destroyed and put out. The marriage union is obsolete. The family unit is obsolete. It just doesn't work. It never worked. 
and it won't work. And now we can see its collapse. A man and a woman, they're not necessarily supposed to be with each other all the time. That's an idea. It sounds wonderful, but it's just not the way it is. We're attracted to different people and we're meant to be sexually involved with other people if we wish to, not because we cannot. So this marriage union, this system that we've been brought into is not working. It has to be and move into communal living, tribal living, the village. And children should be brought up by the tribe, by the commune, not by parents. Parents cannot attend to them. They can be attentive because they're out there making a living. Moms cannot be attending to their children all the time in the modern world. They don't have the support. It doesn't work. So we have to let go of the old model and let the new model to come in. Then it creates possibility for all of this. And of course, as we're enlightening and we're awakening, then we understand how we communicate with our children. But first, we also need to wake up. Okay? Yeah, okay. You're bringing up a new subject, so I... Yeah, it is, it, it, yeah, it is a different subject because it's all connected to each other, so it's not one thing, it's vast. But the old, the old system doesn't work. This unit of, you can see it doesn't work. How many couples do you know, do you see that they're together? Yeah, that's right. It's it, changing. Oh, it's drastically changing. It's becoming single parent deal, which is overwhelming for the single parent. Look at the moms, single moms. They're angry, they're tired, they don't get rested, they feel insecure. Look at it, look at their life. Or new families with a new dad or a new mom. Like yeah, or, siblings. yeah, mostly I say single moms because normally it's the woman who's left out with the child. That's, you know, that's why I'm referring to it. There are some dads who have the child, but it's tremendous amount of pressure on them. And it's just not working. And we can see the result. Look at the current time of the world. That's the result of a system which is not working and it's on the verge of collapse. So basically you're saying you have to go back to really, really ancient times when there was a tribe, uh, a village looking after each other. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And everyone's looking at everyone. We're only talking about children. What about our elders? Look how abandoned they are. What do we do with them? They get older and what do we do? We shove them into some nursing homes and we get rid of them and not want to look at, deal with them anymore. But in a communal Society, everyone's taking care of everyone. Everyone's together. Everyone's contributing. No one's left out. Everyone's cared for. And we need to go back to that. It doesn't have to be a village in the middle of Amazon, but it has to become a communal a new way, a new system, but it has to be communal, that everyone's included in it and everyone's taking care. Because you are in a communal system and then your child has 10 fathers and 10 moms. They're all there attending to the children, taking care of them. They're our future. They're our 
there are pressures, there are investment, and we're not taking care of our future. We're abandoning them and damaging them, not realizing that it's new generation and it's getting screwed up. And what is their guru, their nanny? Their nanny is this phone. And look what they're doing. Go on Instagram. Look at young girls, how they're displaying themselves on Instagram. Look what's come of them, or children, or kids, younger kids. Look what's going on. Their sexuality is completely confused. They're displaying themselves. They're prostituting themselves. They have completely lost their ways. Look what is going on. Just take a look. Browse through and see what's happening for yourself. Look at the music industry, the TV, the stuff is going on. Look how confusing it is for everyone, for the children and the parents. All you have to do is look objectively and browse through. I'm not being righteous or I'm not acting, I'm not religious, I'm not prejudiced. I'm, I have eyes. I'm not stupid. I'm watching and looking what is going on. And it's like, whoa, wow. What the hell is going on here? I don't want my 13-year-old daughter to go get boobs jobs or lips jobs and showing her body parts all naked to 7 billion people. I don't find that art or expressing. I, it's going towards prostitution. It's going towards pornography. It's being twisted, completely twisted in ups and downs. It's not healthy. If you, but I'm not here to argue that with anyone. This is what I see. That's because I'm awake. I can see. My eyes work. My ears hear. And my mind works. I can make an assessment for myself. I don't need anybody to tell me how to think. I can think for myself. And this is what I see. If someone want to agree with me, fine. Doesn't want to agree with me, fine. I'm not here to convince anyone. But I can see something's collapsing and it's not working. Look for yourself. Look around you. Is it working? Is it healthy? Do you think this new trend of the new modern woman wants to be equal to a man from rights and tries to be equal to a man physically and wants to be a single mom? Look how healthy it is. Just take a look at it objectively and come back and tell me whether it's healthy or not. Is it serving our new generation, our investment, our future? If you invest your money, your lifetime savings into a house, would you abandon the house? Would you not care for it? Would you not fix things? repaint the walls, fix the floors, change the old refrigerator and all the accessories, or will you just let it rot? Well, how would you, how would you take care of your investment? Are you there? Yeah, I'm still there. Yeah. yeah. How would you take care of your investment if you put your lifetime savings into a house? Would you abandon it or you be on top of it? Exactly. So are we doing this with our children as a single parent? No. no. We don't. We have abandoned them. We put them in the nursery. We get rid of them. That's what we do. And we go on on the vicious cycle. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, and we're wondering why they're angry with us or they leave us as soon as they hit 18, sometimes a lot earlier. Right. Yeah, so we need to look at ourselves. So we have to 
to be very conscious about the upbringing of our children. Absolutely. Our grandchildren. Or not bring them in. Or not bring them in. So, and not be a robot. Not just acting like a robot because you have to prepare. It takes a lot of preparation in a conscious world to bring children in. The conscious parents, even awakened parents, they fully become prepared and educated. But look what people do. They just pop kids back and forth. And they walk away. You know, most of the time the man just leaves because it's easier. Get, yeah, exactly. You know, get the girl pregnant and just leave and move on to the next next girl. <clears throat> and it's becoming acceptable. But first the people has to be awakened and feel the love inside of them, so that's a long, long way. Yeah, it's a long, long way. But we take, but we're, we here are doing our parts. We're taking our first step. And that's all we can do. We by take. Shining our love. By shining. By. Affecting other people. Exactly, exactly. Don't underestimate the power of love that you have been, you have inherited. Don't underestimate it. Don't get fooled by the size of the planet. It's irrelevant. The power that you have inside you is beyond imagination. Beyond imagination. When you dive into yourself and you come to the power of love and you recognize that you are the torch of light and love and it's the presence of God inside you, it can instantly transform millions of people. And you carry that seed inside you. Yeah, I believe that, really. Yes, I'm happy to hear that. So, for now, we take our attention from the world. These series that I'm sharing these things for you is not to... I'm going systematically. The reason I'm saying these things is not to point out and to try to go out there and fix the world. I want you to fix yourself first. As I fixed myself, first we need to recognize the truth of who we are. We start with one, two, three people. Then it gets 30, 40, 50. And then as more of us awakening to this truth, the hearts, the mind starts to link. And then what it does, it just begins to drastically multiply itself because the grid gets activated through only a few people. All it needs is a few enlightened beings on this planet and they get connected and they activate the grid and it's just going to be like wild fire it's like you're in a cotton field thousands of acres of cotton field and you're walking with a torch and the wind and a part of the cotton field catches fire and there's 100 kilometer wind coming it will just light up the entire planet. It just takes one, one person and then it's going to be two and three and then psh, it goes all over. So we start from here and we start from our, with ourselves. Everything else I said was not to take your attention to the world and its problems and trying to fix that. Everything I shared with you is 
first to, for you to recognize the illusion. of what is not true and then we are going to go towards the source and that's my aim in this nine day journey beautiful <laughs> yeah right <laughs> so, you're welcome uh, those of you who have questions uh, Shanti Devi hi Shanti Devi um, let us talk tomorrow if you don't mind my dear it's coming getting close to 12 o'clock and i'm trying to stick to the schedule and uh we have we have what today's the third day we have six more we have six more days together so i'm not going anywhere i'm going to be here we're going to be together and we're going to go deep and then just hang in there let's process one day at a time this is just starting and it's getting juicier and juicier and this love is going to take over not only this planet i'm not content with this planet my my ego is a little bit big i want all over the universe this planet is small. We want this love that we discover here in ourselves to pierce through any kind of armor in the entire universe, not just here. And this is just the beginning of it because we have just discovered each other. And we're all coming together. So this is going to get strong. So a couple quick announcements. Just be patient with me. Those of you who've been with me, you've heard me saying it. But I'm just going to say it for our new attendees and our audience around the world, whether you're uh, with us through Instagram or Facebook or YouTube um, I do have a coming uh, workshop it's a three-day workshop it's called um, awakening self-awakening mastery the title of the workshop is self-awakening mastery it is deriving from everything I teach and uh, in that workshop we're also going to do specific active meditations that the the work is about to raise our vibrations to a higher frequency so as you raise your vibrations to a higher frequency through the work what happens is old information that is stored in the cellular memory begins to dissipate so the more you dive back into the active meditations are designed to force you to go into silence i'm just going to explain the layout to you so very simply the active meditations are designed to, die, to force you to go into inner silence and to help you bypass the mind to enter into no mind so it's kind of a migration from the head to the heart from analytical thinking to simply being so you come to this space of pure presence which there is no mind and in the place of pure presence you entered into the unified field of oneness into the unified field of the fifth dimensional consciousness it's a new it's a new way of being i'm not saying it's the first time has happened on the planet earth there have been many before us have arrived to fifth dimensional consciousness but we didn't have internet 100 years ago 200 years ago and we could not 
convey it in this way worldwide. This is the first time that we're able to do it in this new era. So there is nothing new as far as wisdom. Everything I share with you and teach you is already been said. There's nothing new that I am telling you because there were many wise people before me. This is the wisdom of the collective. Many wise masters, far more wiser than me, have been on this planet and shared this. But they didn't have internet. And it wasn't global. So now we are transmitting this wisdom and we're waking up to the truth of who we are. A part of this is to A, discover what is not real. So in past two, three times we've been talking, is talking about the world, third dimension, the earth, humanity, its consciousness. And we're starting to realize what is not real. And then we're kind of diverting our attention inwards to what is real. As we're doing that, and we're going to be doing our active meditations in this three-day workshop, is it helps you to raise your vibrations to a higher frequency very quickly, which normally it's difficult to do. And as you're doing that, you start to see the change. Because the information that's stored in the cellular memory in this level is non-existing in this other level. When you enter into a higher dimension, whatever was here is not applicable anymore here. And that's what we're going to do. And then as this shift is taking place, the migration happens from the head, you're dropping to the heart. As you're dropping to the heart, you start to experience the vastness of love, which is here. So this gateway is opening up and the love starts to pour and it becomes like a field that is around you and surrounds you and dances around you. It plays around you. It touches you. It's your breath. It's your pulse. It's your heartbeat. And it keeps connecting more and more. It brings in because it's opening up. And it's connecting. It keeps connecting because everything else starts to recognize itself. Because the very fabric of this existence, even though it looks very screwed up, the underlying fabric of it is pure love. The very underlying fabric and your existence was pure love. When you seed was planted and your parents came together, in that moment of connecting, even maybe if it was just pure sex, in the moment of the connecting, in that very moment, was sparked by love. It was sparked by the presence. It was God that decided the spark to go because there is nothing, nothing outside of God. Everything is God, including the dark and unconscious and the light and the angels. So your very first spark of your existence happened out of love. And that is always there. That's the underlying fabric of the entire universe. So the work is to bring us back to this place of this recognition. And in that recognition, as, as 
you touch it and it's sparking and this chemical reaction, this electromagnetic field starts to awaken and your vibration starts to rise, all your issues and problems that you were dealing with, that a lot of us physically, they're storing it in our back and shoulder and lower back. That's where most of the blockages are. As your vibration starts to change, this old information that is stored in the cellular memory, that's why when you're doing therapy, you can't get rid of it because you're not changing, you're not working on a vibrational shift, you're working on memories. So it doesn't work. It's obsolete work. But as you're rising your vibrations to a higher frequency, and you're coming to this other dimension, all of that old information gets wiped out. So you don't really need to do therapy to get rid of it. You have to learn a way to raise your vibrations to a higher frequency. And that only happens through silence. And silence can be accomplished through active meditations because the mind is very strong and a lot of you can't quiet your mind. So I have to come up with a way and a system and a method that can reach the very basic person who doesn't know how to quiet their mind. And that's where I designed this program, the Self-Awakening Mastery Program. So that's what we're doing. Okay? Yeah. Great. And uh, very quickly, I've mentioned that before. I did this year design a training program. It's a one-on-one -on -one tailor-made training program. It's called Life Training Program that I've designed it. It takes between three to five months during this program. And if some of you feel like, and I'm only, I'm basically offering it this year. Uh, well, 2020 is almost over. I don't foresee any foreign travel happening. Of course, I don't know the future, but I am planning on extending this one-on-one -on -one training program for one more year until the gateway is open and I can go, go back to my traveling and teaching around the world. So it is a great opportunity for some of you who can commit to it and can afford it, of course, is to jump on board and I will help you and I'll design a specific training program for your needs. So if you're interested, uh, contact me, write to me. My email is info at zaratustra.tv. Info at zaratustra.tv. You have to learn how to spell my name. The rest of it is easy. And write to me and we make a, an appointment and we do a consultation and we go from there. If you are viewing this uh, through website, go ahead and feel free to subscribe. Uh, my YouTube channel is Zaratustra 5D, Instagram Zaratustra 5D, and my uh, uh, you can reach my Facebook uh, pages as well, Zaratustra 5D. Correct, Amir? Yes. 5D. Right. This. This uh, broadcast is already going to be immediately going to be on Facebook, so you have access to it. We will also work on it, and it's going to take a day or two for Amir um, to put it on my YouTube channel, but it's immediately available on Facebook, and it's going to be also available on my website. Uh, we're a small organization. We basically offering this program on um, donations. So if your heart desires, go ahead and help. And if not, we still love you anyways. 
sending you my love. Love you very much. Thank you for being here. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Namaste.